How's it going guys? Jacob here. Today is an exciting day because I am sitting down with the all new Nord Stage 4. It's finally here and I am seriously pumped about it. In front of me is the Nord Stage 4 88 with the full 88 keys and weighted keys, but behind me are the other two keyboards in the Nord Stage 4 family. That being the Nord Stage 4 Compact, which is a 73 key keyboard, and that has semi-weighted waterfall triple sensor keybed. All these have a triple sensor keybed now. Then you also have the Nord Stage 4 HA73, which is a 73 key keyboard, and that has fully weighted triple sensor keybed. And then of course the 88 that I have here in front of me now is also fully weighted keys. Now you're probably wondering which Nord Stage 4 should I get? Well, know that the main differences are what I just stated. It's the number of keys and it's the key bed. So again, if you like that semi-weighted kind of waterfall key feel because you're an organ player, you'll want to go with that one. But if you're a pianist and you need 88 keys and you like fully weighted action because that's the kind of playing you do, then you'll probably want to go for the Hammer 88 here. But the thing they all have in common is this updated panel layout, which is one of the things that's newest about the Nord Stage 4, because that's the other thing you're gonna be wondering, what's new? Why do I need to pick up one of these? Is there a significant amount of changes that makes this keyboard an upgrade? Well, as a guy that, honestly, I'll say plays Nords on a lot of gigs, Stage 3 has been my keyboard for a while, I am personally excited about the things that they've added to this keyboard. And there are a lot of significant changes, a lot of new things that I think are worth checking out. Let's quickly go through some of the things that are new and the things that excite me about this keyboard. One of them is the effects section. You can now do an effect per chain, per sound. So before you really had to apply the effects to the entire keyboard. Well, now you can go through and you have effects just for piano A and for piano B, for organ A and organ B, and for synth section A, B, and C, because now you have, rather than in the other models, having a panel A and B flipping between three organ, piano, and synth sounds, and then three more sounds, so panel A and B, that was on the stage three, now you have A and B on just the organ. So that's two different settings, two different patches in just the organ section. You have two in just the piano section and three A, B, and C and faders for each one. I can tell you, I haven't even spent that much time with this thing because it's very new. I already love that part. The fact that there are faders, it's easy. I'm already figuring it out. Um, but back to the layers, you have the ability to set independent effects to each section to each A or B or A, B, C section. So for instance, on the synth right now, those are the sounds I've got. Another cool feature is solo, which allows you to just hear individual sections. So right now this is A, synth A, which is a super saw. Here's strings, which is B, C, which is a bell sound. And then I turn it off, I can hear them all. So that's a really cool way to tweak each sound individually by being able to solo them. But back to the effect. So for just the A sound, I can turn on, say, vibe. Maybe a Ottawa. But now when I go to B, there's a completely different set of effects. So I can turn these on and tweak them like this. And now I've got an effect set up, a set of effects for each sound individually. And another quick thing is if you shift click, now it's affecting all three at the same time. So and if I click again, now you'll see that it's essentially it's copied that effect to all three of the synth sections there. It's, it's so great. It's so amazing. Another new thing is the presets on the Nord Stage 4. So before, and you still have this, you have the big knob here to go through your different programs that have sometimes some simple things like this is just synth. Here's just one that's piano. Love that it's like a felt 
piano. It's really good. But some of them have more sounds layered. Here's piano and synth. But now with the Nord Stage 4, you also get a preset library for each engine for organ, piano, and synth. So if I go to organ, now I have organ presets. And I can cut off the other sections. And you see they've all got different effects. So these presets have effects applied already and different split points set up. So there's a split. But you could set a split, put a bass down there if you wanted to. And there is a preset in here that already has that where you have that classic walking bass that you would maybe do on a lower manual or you do with the foot pedals on a B3. And then you have the upper manual for soloing and chords and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's the other thing. In my opinion, Nord has one of the best organ modeling. Their B3 stuff especially sounds great. Um, and you get that with this section. But since I'm here, I have to talk about a glaringly obvious thing about over here, physical draw bars. Yo, this is good. This is good stuff. I mean, it just makes sense because for those of you out there that are seasoned organ players, and it's a big part of what you do. We all have to play digital versions of the instrument. It's not a B3, it's not the same, but it's necessary. And again, Nord sounds really good, but a major upgrade. It's not that just the LED with the buttons anymore, it's physical draw bars. And another cool thing, you can be on preset mode here, so I can set a setting and... Just like you would do pull those bars out quickly, you have that kind of technique. But if I go, if I click preset here, now I'm to a setting where the LED lights are off. So if you prefer that, it's a little bit more traditional, which is where you would just have the physical draw bars and no lights. I kind of like the lights, but you know, push this back and I love the organs. Let's go on and look at some of the other presets in the preset library up here. So I mentioned there's also piano. So here's some pianos. <laughs> Turn the organ off. There's some cool new effects over here. And while I'm thinking about it, because I thought, hey, I'd like to add some reverb. Of course, go to piano, I'm on piano A. There's room and stage and hall, which you would remember from the stage three, if you have a stage three. But now there's also booth, spring, so spring reverb and cathedral. So let's check out those new ones here on this piano. There's the spring reverb there. Now booth. So you can hear it's really quick. It's got a really short decay time, like you were in a booth, like a small recording room. And then cathedral, which you can imagine what that might sound like.
That might be a little bit much, but I really like the way the reverb sounds, and that gives you a sense of it. While we're in piano, I can talk about a setting I just used a little bit when I was playing. You saw me make a change. It's over here in keyboard touch and dynamic compression. These are very useful things. There was something similar on the stage three, but it's been updated, it's been improved. So if I put the dynamic compression off, now I'm just using keyboard touch. This is on medium. I'm playing, you know, pretty relaxed there, not a lot of attack. I'm gonna play the same way, put it on light. Now on heavy. Now I'm playing the exact same way, but what that's doing is essentially acting like a velocity curve and allowing me to get either a higher velocity out easier or have a lower velocity. So a lot of times, maybe if you've got something that's technical and you don't want it to pop out too much, well, you can put it on heavy and... It stands out more, right? So on light, I don't have to work as hard to get it to stand out. Now, if I also use dynamic compression, it can also make it stand out even more. So if I put it on one, now two, now three. So when I was playing that little thing before, I noticed that what I was playing wasn't really standing out that much. I really had to dig in to make it stand out. But if I turn this to light and then dynamic compression, now Now I don't have to work quite as hard to get it to stand out, especially when it's something that's a little bit technical like that. There's also a unison mode, which gives you not quite the full honky-tonk effect, but it gives you something kind of close. So this is with it off, then to one, two, and then three. So, right. That's kind of what you want to do on that sound. But if that's something you want to do, honestly, that can be a really nice effect, especially to add with some chorus, maybe. That could be kind of cool. That's already adding some more character and something different to a basic piano sound. All right, so let's just go through some more presets. There's so many awesome features, so I keep getting into those, but let's just hear some sounds right now. So here's Concert Grand. Dark Grand. I dig that sound. Keith in Cologne. Sloppy Grand. I guess I can hear that. Um, there are way more. So it starts at one, 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 zero, one, and then goes all the way to 64. Um, so that's very cool. Then in synth, you get, again, a whole nother set of presets just for the synth engine. And these have the wheel also built in that is already pre-mapped to certain effects or to change the volume. Now, I can't say this enough. Having faders in here, I mean, look, you used to be able to see the main knob for the entire section going up with the wheel, but now each individual patch, you can see that. See the volumes going up? 
So the wheel is bringing in, that is strings right there, legato, and then there are flutes up at the top. And I can easily make that more dramatic if I wanna set these to be completely off when the wheel is down. Now, really nice. And again, if I want to just hear one. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get lost in it again, but let's let's hear a few other here's another pad here. Woo! And while we're in synth, we can talk about a few of the things that are going on. Oh, I had it soloed. Yeah, <laughs> there's all three layers. It sounds great. Over here you have amp, which this is really important. This is where you can set your envelope and you can see on the screen you have a new look here, and it's very intuitive, very visual. So you have attack, decay, release, your standard things, but what's really unique about it is that you can do it per section or all the sections at once. So if you actually double click on section edit there, now I'm actually changing the attack, decay, and release, the envelope, envelope, <laughs> for all three sections. So now as soon as I turn section edit off, you can see if I go from one to the next, they've all got their own, but I can set them individually as well. I can go and do a an unique set, and now you'll see I've got a specific amp setting for each sound. But again, if I wanna just fix that, say, ah, I wanna apply it to all of them, just double click. Set it up. And there it is. Now, we can also talk about the mode here, which is samples and analog. So in analog, you have your simple categories you used to, but with some extra ones in there. There's more options, there's more saw, there's multi-saw now. You can see the wave here. I love seeing the actual waveform. Let me solo that. So that's a sine square. Pulse, squeeze, fold, E saw, E square, sync, bell as well. <laughs> you also have FM, here's FM harmonics. That's changing the partial. Like a robot dreaming. And then you have some waveform types based on different pianos, so uh, clove, acoustic piano, DX, electric piano. So, you know, I, I could go through it all, but honestly, uh, you can see that there's a lot there. Um, and for any of you guys out there that are used to building your own sounds, um, this is really great. And if you are familiar with the Nord Wave 2, it's actually based on that. So the look of it, uh, the whole way the screen is laid out for the analog stuff especially, um, is based on that. And it's, it's great that they took another thing that worked really well, that especially a lot of synth people will respect, and they merged it in the full keyboard. And again, you get that with all the Stage 4s. The difference between these is the keys, the feel, but this layout, this panel, all this new stuff, all these features are in all three keyboards. Let's go back to some main program presets here. 
<laughs> There's so many great ones in here that they've built. It's an EP sound. Organs. Yes, indeed. Okay, back to some... Ah, I got some delay on that piano sound. I can also mention now, something else I've been thinking about, is that you get a variation for all of the effects. So right now we have chorus effect in the delay section, if I do variation. So here's what it sounds like now. A variation. really cool little feature, a new thing in the effect section. There's this thing called pump. It's very neat. Let me, it speaks for itself. I don't even need to talk about it. There's a variation on that as well. So you can hear what it does. It's adding a pump effect depending on the rate and the speed. Of course, that could be synced to a master click. You could have it triggered with a pedal, and that's what a lot of people will do. There's a lot of, uh, especially EDM type artists, people that are playing on a keyboard, that they want to trigger something in time like that. And sometimes you'll do it with a pedal, sometimes it'll be triggered with the kick drum of the drummer so that every time they kick, it pulls away your sound. Uh, but this is a cool way to just have it as a, almost as a preset effect. Um, so if you need that sound, you need that boom, spoon, spoon sound, you got it right there. There's something else that's really cool in the synth section, and you heard it on that pad, that big pad that I made for the beginning, for that intro I did. Let's use solo and listen to each individual sound. So here's all the sounds I have. I have piano, then a second piano, then A is actually white noise. Sorry, red noise, that's red noise. Noise. And then for B is a bass. Super saw bass. And then C is like a lead sound, a, a square lead. Now when I play this whole chord together, you're hearing, hopefully you can hear, you're hearing that top line, that lead sound up at the top, you're hearing the bass at the bottom and the piano in the middle. How am I doing that? Because if you have a mono sound, Shouldn't it be going all over the place because the bass and the lead are mono, the chords in the middle are poly playing more than one note. Here's how it's working. In voice here, you have mono and legato settings, and then if you turn those off, you just go to poly, but under that you have low and high, and what that's doing is setting a priority for where you want that sound to play in the chord. So having the lead sound on high means that when I play a chord, That synth sound, that lead is always gonna be the top note. 
no matter what I do. Now, if I put it on low, now it's the lowest note. And even if I arpeggiate, like if I put it back on high, heard how as I kept playing higher notes, it just keeps going higher in the chord, but it's still sustaining the other ones. That is so cool because I started this thing playing a full arrangement. I was actually kind of playing on a jazz standard that has some complex chords and I was going in and out of accompanying and playing single lines and then playing the melody with a full chord underneath and the bass. And I have that bass set to low. Always low. This is so cool. Again, of all the new features, I know this is gonna be one that I'm gonna be using a lot. Now, I can't mention everything, but a couple more new things that are cool. You do have a layer function, kind of similar to how you had layer A and B on the Nord stage. Three, you have layer scene here. If I do layer, now I have a completely new layer. So I can turn on other engines, make edits, and then go back to what I had before. So. So I have two layers. So essentially what you can do is for a program, for one program, I could save to this program, I could have all three engines with A, B, and C, A, B, A, B here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sounds. And then I could do the layer two and then have another seven sounds saved to just that one preset. That's very cool. Another cool thing about that is you can also set the pedal, especially if you have a triple pedal, this could be good, to switch the layer scene for you. So you can actually have the middle pedal automated to where when you do the middle pedal, I don't have it right now, but it would switch like that. So if while you're playing, you don't even have to leave the keys. You can switch between your different panels or layers with just the pedal. And that's the Nord Stage 4. Thanks for checking it out with me. I hope this gets you inspired to maybe add this keyboard to your collection or one of the two behind me. If you've got any questions about it, you can put those in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, click here for more videos like this one, and go to sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs.